The FBI has now joined the search for a Yale University grad student who's been missing since Tuesday, just days before her wedding. CBS News correspondent Kelly Wallace is in New Haven, Connecticut with the latest this morning. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Maggie. A spokesperson with Yale University says there is no evidence of foul play at this time. Annie Lee disappeared from the building behind me. Her family, friends, and her fiance are holding out hope the mystery will be solved and their Sunday wedding, which still has not been officially canceled, can ultimately go on. On her Facebook page Sunday, 24-year-old Annie Lee wrote, less than one week till the big day. But two days later, the Yale University doctoral student vanished. FBI agents used dogs to search the building where she went missing Tuesday morning. We're just praying that she's just going to pop up somewhere and everything's okay. We're not going to look at the worst here. The last sighting of Lee was at 10 a.m. Tuesday after she walked a few blocks from one office lab to another. Surveillance video captured her entering the building. That building was evacuated after an unexpected fire drill at 1 p.m. There is no evidence Lee actually left. Her purse and cell phone were found back in her office lab. We're all kind of at edge walking around because we don't know what happened. So we just like to, you know, hear what happened and know if that we're safe. Lee's fiance, Jonathan Wadowski, a PhD student at Columbia, didn't return emails, but is reportedly in New Haven helping with the search. Two of Wadowski's lab partners at Columbia tell the early show Lee visited him as recently as Friday night and that the two seemed very excited about the wedding. His roommate tells the New York Post that the minute Wadowski learned Lee was missing, he was on a train to New Haven, that he was very distraught and worried. The timing is terribly cruel, the roommate said. Maggie. CBS is Kelly Wallace. Thank you, Kelly. Joining us from Washington this morning, criminal profiler Pat Brown. Pat, good morning. Good morning, Maggie. As we heard, authorities do not suspect foul play. But in your experience, the fact that this happened so close to the wedding, is that a coincidence or is it possible that somebody here got cold feet, either the bride or the groom-to-be, and did something about it? Oh, well, that's a good question. And I, I think it's interesting that they're saying they don't suspect foul play at all. I mean, I don't know where they would get that from uh, because there's one of two things would have happened. One is she sort of staged a disappearance like we had with Jennifer Wilbanks because she wanted out or she wanted attention and just vanished. Right. And uh, in that case, we should see some behaviors in her past that show that she has that kind of personality, that attention-seeking personality. But if she doesn't have that attention-seeking personality at all, then we would have to suspect foul play because what else would it be then? So will police look at her ex-boyfriend no matter what? Is that who you go to? right off the bat in this kind of investigation? Well, I mean, well, we I'm sorry, look, her fiance, I said ex-boyfriend. Yeah, we have to look at everybody, including if there's an ex-boyfriend out there, anybody who knew her, even a stalker type that maybe liked her and was angry that she was getting married. They, I say they'll have to look at her behavior to see if she has anything peculiar, be sure that the boyfriend or the ex-fiance, does he have an alibi? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Does he have any odd behaviors? Anybody else in her life? Anybody she worked with who had something going? going on strange with her. And then they're going to look at the behaviors of that day exactly. Why would she leave her purse there? Is that something she normally did? Where, does she normally go over to the lab with just her, you know, just her ID in her hand? What happened with that alarm? Could somebody right. have pulled the alarm and put a gun to her head and taken her out of the building? Could she have pulled it and rushed out with the crowd so nobody would see her? And these are all the things the police have to look at and start eliminating one theory after the other until they can figure out exactly what happened to her. The FBI searched her apartment yesterday. What sort of thing will they be looking for? What kind of evidence do they need to solve this path? Well, I think they're probably looking at the apartment to see if there is any evidence that she has some behaviors that would indicate that this was not an abduction of any sort, that she had something going on in her personal life that wanted to make her disappear, that maybe she left her purse, but yet she had some other money that she could have taken with her uh, and then disappeared with that. Uh, any kind of things on her computer or anything left around her apartment that was suspicious, that's what they're doing. They're looking at those behaviors and they're going to cover all bases because if she's been abducted, of course, you want to find her. And if she hasn't been abducted, you need to know that too so you don't waste a whole, you know, a whole lot of money, which we did on the Jennifer Wilbanks case. Right. And time, which is of the essence. Pat, Absolutely. Pat Brown, thank you so much for your expertise as always. Thanks, Maggie. You're welcome.